What's good with you, tribe? This is going to be your review for Greenleaf Season 3, Episode 3. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button, and I hope you like this video. <clears throat> so this is a situation where, you know how they always tell you when you get angry about something? To calm down, think about it, think it all the way through. This is, this is a perfect example of that. So, before you act. So, we start the episode off with the women at the breakfast table. We got Lady May, we got Gigi, and Gigi's daughter. Sitting at the breakfast table, and you know, G Lady May is being she's being her her Lady May first lady self, acting like everything is all good, you know, not not letting on about what's really going on between her and the bishop, telling the daughter, the granddaughter, you know that is, because you know she's giving Gigi the cold shoulder. She's telling the granddaughter that hey, let's do let's do dinner tonight, me and you. Let's we haven't done that in a while, and I feel like I've been neglecting you. And she's like, oh, that'd be great, Grandma. You know, okay. So, Gigi and her mother start having words. So, the daughter gets up from the table. She's like, yeah, let me get up out of here. I ain't trying to be in the middle of this stuff. So, they get to kind of arguing a little bit. And the maid comes in with a package for Lady May. Lady May opens it up. It's divorce papers from the bishop. Honey, Lady May asks, she, oh, Lord, she got upset. She got her stuff together. Gigi said, well, what's, what's that, Ma? She looked over at her. She said, are you serious? She said, after what you did to me? She said, if you weren't family, the only reason why you're still in my house is because you're family. I don't have nothing to say to you. She gets up from the table. She gets in her car, and she burns rubber up out that damn house. You hear me? She goes to see a lawyer. And it's you can tell it's a barracuda. Because she asked, um, Lady May asked her, she said, are you um, a Christian? She said, she said, not very. No, she said, are you religious? She said, not very. She said, but you're going to be thankful for that when we get done. And she told Lady May, she said, look, let me be honest with you about something. She said, I'm going to do what you want me to do, and I'm going to do my best to get, you know, do my job. And I'm good at my job. She said, but all first ladies come in here wanting the same thing. Lady May said, I just want what's mine or what I deserve. She said, yeah, that's what they want. She said, well, let me explain something to you. It doesn't matter how many Sundays you preach. It doesn't matter how much money you raise. It doesn't matter how much volunteering you do. It doesn't matter how many classes you taught. When the bishop is done with you, you are no longer a first-class citizen. And there's nothing I can do about that. Right? So you see Lady May sort of thinking about it. She gets a little in her feelings and everything. And she tears out of the lawyer's office. So we'll get back to Miss Lady May. Then we see the bishop. He didn't show up at church. And he's scared. He didn't sent the papers. But now he's scared of what comes next. He's asking everybody. Y'all y'all seen the first lady? Anybody seen the first lady? And is the first lady around? And everybody keeps telling him, no, she's not here. No, she's not here today. Nope, she's not in. She ain't come in yet. He's like, oh, okay. Whew, all right. His uh, secretary, you know, uh, what was her name? Clarissa. Said, you want me to call her? He said, no, she'll find me. Because he know when she get them papers, honey, it's going to be on and a popping. So, while he's at the, while he's in there, he's kind of nervous. You know, he's nervous, worried about what's going to happen with Lady, what Lady May's going to do or not do. Chastity, I mean, Charity comes in there. She's telling him, look, you know, I'm off the tour. I quit the tour. I'm staying home. But I feel like I need to grow. My role here at the church needs to expand. And I want to start preaching. And he looked at her. He was like, some bullshit. What are we doing? He said... She said, well, we haven't talked about it for a long time. He's like, yeah, I know. And you can see in his mind, he's like, yeah, I know. Like, for a reason, we ain't talked about it for a long time. So she says, um, well, Dad, you know, last night God put, put something on my heart. And, you know, God told me. Uh, and he, she starts talking about what she's going to preach on. And he's looking at her. He's like, did I ever tell you that I really wanted to... What did he say? Play baseball? I'm going to make it up because I don't know if that's what he said or not. And I had all these dreams to play baseball. And when that didn't work out, that's when I decided to become a pastor. She said, no, Daddy, you didn't tell me. He said, because it didn't happen. He said, you, he said preaching isn't a second, is not a second choice. He said, you are a singer. You are a good singer. And your career is taking off. That's where I think you need to focus. 
you don't decide to be a preacher as a backup plan because your first one fell through. That ain't how this works. He said, so no, you no, you, we're not going to have you up there preaching. We're going to let you stay in the music ministry. That's your, that's your lane. You're going to stay in it. So she gets mad and she, she takes, you know, she storms up out of there. She's all upset. Over at Triumph. Uh, Tasha is uh, talking to Jacob and she tells Jacob look I ain't trying to accuse nobody of doing nothing she said but it really seems really curious to me that there's a whole lot of open envelopes coming from the same usher area you know she said it looks like somebody is stealing money he said I'm not accusing anybody of stealing money but it looks like somebody's stealing money so he's like well I tell you what and I like the way he handled it he said I tell you what I want to call a meeting we're going to call a meeting with all of the ushers in that zone. He said, and Tasha, don't tell them what it's about. If they, if anybody asks why I want to meet with them, tell them I want to thank them for their service. You know, I just want to thank them. I just want to talk to them, and I want to thank everybody for what they're doing. He, she said, okay. And I like the way he handled that. So they call all the ushers in, and his daughter, Zora, is one of them. And he basically is giving them the whole, you know, I see you when you sleep and I see, I know when you're awake. I know if you've been bad or good, so be good for goodness sake. He kind of gave them that old speech like, you know, I really thank you all for coming. I really thank everybody for being here. He said, and I want to let you know that I see everything that you do. Everything. And I know everything that happens. And I just want to thank y'all because I know how hard it is. You know, he, he sugarcoated it, but he was letting them know. That he was sending a message to whoever was taking the money. So when he got to the end of his little speech and he said, Amen. Everybody said Amen except for Zora. So he kind of looked at Zora. So then Zora said, Amen, Amen. So they're at the table. Um, the, the Jacob and the family, they're sitting at the dinner table. And, um, you know, they're doing... They doing like I, I guess good and bad. A thorn, said a rose or a thorn. Now basically, your rose is what good happened to you today. Thorn, what bad happened? And of course, Zora's being a brat. She talking about how it took her all day to do her homework with a pen, and can she have her computer back? Jacob is like, we gave you your TV. Like life, you know, you can you can write your homework. Life existed before. You good. So she's, you know, she gets up from the table. She got an attitude. She asked to be excused or whatever. And and Jacob tells um Cora that. I mean, Carissa, I said Cora, tells Car Carissa that he thinks that she's stealing. And, of course, Carissa's like, no. Do you have any proof? Like, why would you accuse her? He said, because it didn't start until she started ushering. That's her area that she's ushering in. And the way she acted when I was talking to them today just made me think it was something going on. Like, it just made me feel like something wasn't right. So, you know, Carissa's like, I don't think so, Jacob. Like, no, I don't think no, I don't think she would steal. So, Jacob was like, mm, mm-hmm. So at the end of the episode, I'm just going to skip on let me just finish this up. At the end of the episode, Jacob said, where's the money? He goes in her room and he starts tearing her room up. He's like, where's the money? Because he knows, he knows her. Where's the money? What are you talking about, Daddy? No, what are you talking about? I didn't take any money. I don't have any money. What are you talking about? Daddy, please stop going through my stuff. Daddy, please stop. And Carissa's trying to stop him. Carissa's like, come on, Jacob, Jacob, stop. You're doing too much. Jacob, stop, stop. Jacob, honey, Jacob hit the right box. Opened up that box, dumped it out. It was another little black box inside. He opened that box up, full of money. Tens and twenties. He looked at his daughter. He said, you lied to me. And you was, and you a thief. And he just kind of stormed out. Because I think if he had stayed any longer, he might have put his hands on that child. And um, so I guess we're going to see how that plays out. But yeah, that, that Zora, honey... And I think she was trying to get money to, to run away. I think that's what she was trying to do so she could run away. Because at first, I, when when they saw her with the money and she was trying to get um, old girl to buy her a uh, cell phone, I said, oh, okay, maybe that's why she took the money. But when you saw that all the, that she kept stealing the money, I said, yeah, she's trying to put a plan together. She's trying to run away. So anyway, let's go back over to that. So that's what was going on at Triumph. So let's go back over to, um, y'all know, the church. So all this is going on. Lady Maiden went to see the lawyer. So Lady Maid drives up to a little little bar. 
She goes to the bartender. She orders herself a Brandy Alexander. Let me tell y'all something. That, I used to love me some Brandy Alexanders. That used to be my shit back in the day. I loved me some Brandy Alexanders. I knew exactly what she was ordering. But the bartender didn't know. He wasn't familiar. She said, I tell you what to do. You're going to give me this much vodka, this much cream, and throw a little nutmeg on top, and there you go. And keep them coming. Honey. Lady May was sipping on her Brandy Alexander's at that little blues bar listening to the music. Honey. She got to talking to, she invited some women over to sit with her and she got to telling them her story. So she gets to telling the story about that's the bar. She said, you know my friend? She said, you know Patricia Harris? Um, she's talking to the women. And they say, yeah, Pastor Harris, we know her. She's got churches, you know, she's all over the TV. She said, yeah, that was my friend. They're like, you know her? She said, yeah, we used to be really good friends. She said, and after college, we decided we were going to go to Divinity School. And we both applied to Howard. And we both got in. She said, and the night before we were supposed to leave for Howard, me and her met here at this bar. And I had to tell her that I wasn't going because I had fallen in love. She said, and now, you know, fast forward 40 years later, I gave up my life and my desires and my calling for a man who betrayed me. So she kind of telling all her business, and they kind of looking at her like, oh, damn, man. So she, you know, that's her story. So that's what the significance of that bar is. Now, mind you, she's steadily sipping on them Brandy Alexanders. She probably on her third or fourth, fourth one. And she rolling with it. She is rolling with them Brandy Alexanders. We're going to get back to First Lady. So in the meantime, back over at the church, we have Gigi got a $50,000 check from one of Mrs. Cross's donors. And she said, oh, yeah, she said, I wanted to give more, but, you know, it's always next year. And Gigi says, so, y'all, you really like Miss Cross? I mean, she's really a good, she really is good for what she does. They said, oh, yes. She said, absolutely. She said, she has, you know, made my money work for me, and my money has grown under her, and yeah, she's the real deal. Gigi's like, okay, you know, but you know she still ain't really trusting her. So Gigi is like, um, she ends up calling her boyfriend, Rick Fox, and, um, you know, telling him, look, you know, she told him about th that her mother, something's going on with her parents, and he, her mother then ran about the house and tells them that, um, you know, about the money and everything, and she said, something just ain't right. But they they going out to dinner that night. They confirm they're going out to dinner. He apologizes for calling her a hypocrite and the little fight that they had last week. So now we see Clarissa. I mean, damn, not Clarissa. We see Charity. Charity don't know what to do with herself. She calls Jabari. Now, remember last week, Jabari blew her off. She calls Jabari. He blows her off again. He tells her he's busy. He can't really talk. And he hangs up on her before she get a chance to say goodbye. So, of course, she in her feelings. She goes over to the house to get the baby from Kevin. Kevin ain't home, but the boyfriend is. What well, You know, that's bad. That's trouble right there. So the boyfriend was like, well, you know, you're early. You know, Kevin just ran to the store. He'll be right back. You're early. We're not really, we weren't expecting you this early. And she said, well, I mean, I can't come and get my son. He was like, no, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying we weren't really expecting you. And he was like, we really want to talk to you about something. She was like, don't tell me. You're moving in. He was kind of like. He said, yeah, I had a job interview, and we didn't want to say anything unless it was going to really happen. And it came through. Like, you know, they offered me the job, so, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be moving here. It's going to be permanent. So Chastity loses it. She takes her baby. She runs up out the house. Chastity didn't lost it, y'all. Um, I think we've seen the beginnings of, like, maybe a nervous breakout or something. So Chastity packs up the baby, she gets in that car, and honey, she drives six hours to go where the tour is, to go meet up with Jabari on the tour. And she gets there, and Jabari is like, what are you doing here? And she said, I'm back on tour, I'm here. And she sees her replacement, some chick that Jabari been flirting with. And she said, is that, that's who you had to replace me? She was like, well, she can go home, I'm here now, I'm ready, I'm ready to work. Jabari's like, what? Like, you, what are you doing? You done drove here with the baby? You done been in the car this time with the baby? What what the hell is wrong with you? And she was like, what? Like, I'm 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 here. He said, no. He said, 
I don't want you here. You know, like, like this is not, no, go home. She said, well, what about us? He said, I don't, I don't think there is a us. She said, what are you talking about? She said, well, why, why didn't you break up with me then? Like, why, why are you stringing me along? He said, because I wasn't really sure if I wanted to be with you or not. Like, I hadn't figured it out. He was like, but I'm sure now. Because he probably sees that she looks desperate and like, you know, like, you drove nine hours or six hours with a baby, an infant in the car. Like, he's he's probably seeing a side of her like that insecure, needy, He he's not feeling it. Plus, he's an asshole because it ain't her fault. It ain't on her. Like, you, she was dealing with custody issues, even though it really wasn't as complicated as she made it out to be. But still, if that's your woman, you're supposed to ride or die. You're supposed to rock out with her. You ain't supposed to, to drop her or leave her at the first sign of trouble. And that's so, from that point of view, that's fucked up. So then we see, um, so that's, that's Chastity. Like I said, Chastity's losing it. She's, she's really losing it. She stands there, she's crying. Like, she don't know. Now she really stuck. She's, you know, her, her ex-gay husband then found happiness, but he got found himself a, a, a boyfriend, a lover. And your, your daddy don't want you preaching at the church. And your boyfriend just broke up with you and treated you like some shit. And you lost your career all at the same time. So I really think Chastity's about to, I think it's about to be some real serious trouble on the horizon for Chastity. All right. Back over to Triumph. Y'all, there's all kinds of stuff going on in this episode. So the bishop goes to see Jacob. And while he's visiting Jacob, he tells Jacob what he did. Tells her that he served the mother with divorce papers and Jacob is like what what the hell he said look I know your mother you know she threatened to, to divorce me so I sent her to the papers just to just to knock her back into reality you know just to bring her back around let her know look you can't play this game with me you know like you don't really mean it and and kind of scare her into it so <laughs> It ain't working. And I think the bishop is scared now because she didn't do what he expected her to do. She didn't react the way he expected her to react. You know what I'm saying? She didn't come running into the church mad and cussing and ready to fight him. And she didn't just dropped off the face of the earth. He doesn't know where she is. So he's really, really worried about her now um, because this just isn't how she would normally act. So later on that night, we see the bishop is back home. He's having dinner with, um, the, with the granddaughter because, of course, May ain't there to have dinner like they had planned to have dinner. And he's talking to her and having a really honest conversation with her about, you know, you know, just how life is, some things about life or whatever. And May calls. She calls to apologize for missing dinner and said, look, you just let everybody know that I'm fine. I'm going to stay. I'm, I'm, I'm not coming home tonight, but I'll be home in the morning. But let everybody know that I'm fine. So the bishop gets on the phone to talk to her. Of course, she don't speak to him. She hangs up. Um, he wants to know where she is, why she ain't coming home. Um, Gigi is out to dinner with, with Rick Fox, and she's telling Rick Fox that she thinks that they need to investigate Miss Cross because it's just something ain't right with her. Something just something just ain't clean in the sauce with Miss 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 Wright. I mean, with Miss Cross. So he does a background investigation on her. And he tells Gigi, "Look, everything checks out with her. Like whatever." cover story she's using it checks out and she must have covered up her tracks that she's not connected to bassy blassy bassy whatever his name is with her brother so you know she must be legit in what she does she just got a vendetta right lady may is dancing in the crowd honey she is drunk as a skunk she eating fried catfish she is having herself the time of her life at this bar so what i like is that she was smart enough to know hey Ain't no need. I can't go home. Like, I can't drive. So she asked the bartender, the guy that been hooking her up with the Brandy Alexanders all night, he asked her, he said, look. She said, look. What's up with that hotel across the street? She said, because I'm in no condition to drive home. She said, but I can't do no bugs or nothing. He said, well, ma'am, I don't think that it's, um, it's not probably, it's probably not up to your normal uh, caliber, but it's clean. You know, it's a nice hotel. It's clean. She says, okay. So we see her stumbling across the parking lot and going and checking into her hotel room and, you know, just having a moment. She's just having a moment trying to figure it all out, trying to decide where to go from here. You know, 
we know that she's upset. We know that, you know, she's thinking about what she felt like she gave up in her marriage to um, the bishop. So, then we see Tasha and Miss Cross having a conversation. Tasha's sort of having cold feet a little bit. She's starting to really... I don't think it's a, I don't think it's fake. I don't think it's 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 make believe. I think she really is is liking Jacob. And I don't even think it's sexual. I don't think she's trying to break up his family or anything like that because you know um Cross is uh, what's her name? Rashida R R Rashawn Ronda whatever her name is. She was like, "Yeah, that was a good touch with the diamonds." You know, that was she said that's the oldest trick in the book. She was like, "It wasn't a trick." Like I really, you know, was trying to help him find something nice for his for his wife. She was like, "Are you getting soft on me?" Like, you know what the plan is. We just need to stick to the plan, and it's going to be okay. She was like, but if you're getting soft on me, then I need to know. And she was like, no, I'm not getting soft on you. She said, I'm just, you know, they're just not, as, they're just not that bad of people as I thought they were. She was like, look, they still killed my daddy over, over an insurance check. They burned that church down and killed my father. And for that, they need to pay. She said, and all of them need to pay. The whole Greenleaf family needs to pay. The sins of the father will be visited on the children, basically, is what she's saying. And um, they said, when that when those IRS, when that IRS rolls in, they ain't going to know what hit them. And she was like, how did you even get that case back open? So that tells me that they did take care of the tax situation. But she said, well, I know, some, I know people in high places. And she was able to get the case back open. She said, when they come rolling through there, they ain't going to know what hit them. She said, we just got to stay the course. We're right in this. She said, we are, we are on the right side. I'm doing nothing wrong. I'm just trying to get vengeance on what they did to me and my family. So Tasha's like, all right. But you can tell she having second thoughts. So you can tell she ain't really feeling it. She ain't really feeling it. So Chastity calls Kevin from the road. Or Kevin calls her to check in. And she's like, everything is okay. He can tell something's wrong with her. He can hear it in her voice. And he's like, everything is okay, you know. He said, well, Chastity, where are you? Charity. I keep calling that girl Chastity. He said, Charity, where are you? She said, I'm on the road. I'm on tour. Now, mind you, I know she ain't on tour, right? Jabari didn't tell her ass to go home. So, essentially, you did what Kevin told you not to do, and then you lied about it. So you, even if you were really on tour, it was still wrong because Kevin told your ass not to go. But now, you ain't even really on tour. So I told y'all, she done lost it. We're going to see how this whole thing, how it all boils down, honey. So, last but not least, Lady May, she shows up. She goes back to the uh, church. She tells, um... What's the woman, the girl's name, Carissa? She said, yeah, schedule the jet for me to go to Atlanta. I'll be going and coming back the same day. I need to go visit somebody. And I guess she's going to go visit her girlfriend, that, the, 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 pre, the pastor, the female pastor that she was talking about, who's going to be Patty LaBelle. And she goes in to talk to Jacob, and Jacob said, May, I'm so sorry. I mean, not Jacob, the bishop. She said, I'm so sorry. I should have never sent those papers. I apologize. I just did it in anger, you know, and I, I'm sorry. You know, it's, it's, let's just work this out. Let's just forget about all of this, and let's sit down and work it out. She said, oh, no, no, you did me a favor. She said, I, I appreciate what you did. She said, you did me a favor. You made me remember what I need to do. She said, um, you took my calling from me. I was called to, to pastor, and I gave that up for you. And so now I'm going to reclaim what's mine. She said, my lawyer has made some notes in the margins. You go ahead and give it to your lawyer and let them work it out. Good day. Honey, you could buy the bishop for five cent and a nickel. I said five cent and a nickel. But, yeah, I mean, you opened up Pandora's box, Bishop, and she walked right through it. She didn't do what you thought she was going to do. You thought she was going to throw a fit and do what y'all always did. But, see, you can only push somebody but so far so many times. Now, let me say this, though. When May went to the lawyer, she tried to make it seem like this was all one-sided. You had an affair, too. Now, you might have had your reasons for having an affair. You might felt like your reasons were justified. But that don't change the fact that you had an affair. 
Okay? Okay. So that's what happened last night on Greenleaf. Y'all let me know how y'all think. What y'all think going to happen to Chastity? I think Chastity is having a nervous breakdown. And it's a shame that she's got that baby. It's bad enough to have a nervous breakdown when you're by yourself. But when you have a child, that's a whole nother conversation. Anyway, y'all let me know what y'all think. Drop it in the comments.